Let's talk about access modifiers. There's an access modifier folder in your projects. We're looking at the project access modifiers one. So what are access modifiers? Modifiers are what we place up here to, along with our types, and if we were doing constant, we would write const in here, as you'll see in the const video. So modifiers are what you see here. We're working with an access modifier. Most of the time you're going to see public up until we get to the sections on classes and objects and things like that and structures and as we move forward into more advanced parts of the training this is just to let you know that that public doesn't have to be confusing. When we have public there we're giving access to all. So we can access this member here. This is a member. We can access this in another class. So we have two classes here, class one and class two my class 1, my class 2, and we're accessing, after we initialize a variable here, class MC, then we're going to access these variables directly. We're going to try to access Z and Z1, but these are protected, so we're going to get a problem with that, because we can't access the private and protected across the class directly. So we have to, for the sake of working with this in a separate class, we're going to have to create a method that allows us to access this Z value and we can see that this member does have access to this private data as you can see we'll look at this in detail later this is just to give you an idea of how it works and some basics of it we note that we have a problem here we get two compiler errors my class 1.z is inaccessible because of the protection level same thing for z1 so if we click here double click there and then take a peek where it went there it is we're trying to assign that value there and we can't do it because it's protected that's not going to happen and you can see here when we actually write out to the console we're doing mc.accessme to get value to get that value of z so we're using a method because that's private and a lot of times you do the private for your members because you don't want all different classes to have access to your particular data it's just a the best way to do things is just the standard way of doing things. You'll see this later. It just protects things. It gives you more protection. And when you're dealing with working with large groups, for example, and other people are writing classes and working together, and then you have third-party classes and third-party libraries and things like that, you don't want everybody stomping on or through your applications and classes without actually doing things in the right orderly way. So things can happen, you can have conflicts, you just want to be able to access it a certain way. This is just really for the basics. So you can see what's going on. Now if we run this, we can run this, but we have to actually comment this out. We would have to write an additional method there to change the value if we wanted to, because access me is just one way. It's just returning the value of Z. It does have access to that, so no big deal success you can do it that way or you can do it from the debug start without debugging control f5 there we see the output x is equal to 10 y is equal to 15 and z is equal to 11 because we assign the value of 11 to our private integer z so don't get confused we'll do this later you're going to see public you might see private and we're going to discuss protected and Internal is another one. Protected internal is another one as well. And it can get a little bit confusing. You're wondering what is going on. For the most part, if you can understand public and private, then you're well on your way to understanding this. And we'll discuss those details as we move forward.